All right, folks, uh, this is my current setup right now. <clears throat> Running the speed density, I've got a uh, AEM 3.5 bar map sensor. I've got a GM uh, IAT, IAT sensor there. <clears throat> pretty self, simple self, uh, pretty simple setup. Nothing real extravagant. I just build it trying to go fast. So it's got a two liter aluminum rod motor with 10 to one compression, <laughs> uh, big cams and all that. Swap it over to a GM mass airflow sensor for this video so you guys can uh, see uh, some tuning for idle for a mass airflow sensor, which I haven't really gotten gone over a whole lot. Go ahead and swap it out. I'll check back with you guys here shortly. All right, real quick, this is what I'm going with. It's a uh, GM three and a half inch mass airflow sensor. A lot of people don't like to use a mass airflow sensor because of restriction because the honeycomb's in it. As you can see, mine has poured it out. I don't have much of a restriction there. I've taken out the honeycomb and I've taken out that uh, crossbar going across. So, um, alleviate a lot of uh, restriction for me. And uh, anyway, go ahead and throw it in. I just figured I'd show this to, to you guys real quick, show you what I'm dealing with. Uh, going from two and a half inch to uh, three and a half inch mass airflow sensor and uh i'm gonna go ahead and get it on in there and i'll be back all right so we're back now i've got my uh gm mass airflow sensor installed i still have my map sensor installed so i can still log boost um as you see i've got my iat sensor disconnected right now um i don't have an iat only because um <clears throat> or I'm not running one now only because I don't have a bung welded in. I could probably have one welded in right here and still look at my IAT sensors. And basically, we're just looking at the intake temperatures after the turbo, uh, or after the intercooler, I should say, when we're looking at IATs. Anything where you see uh, air temp, that's anything before the mass airflow sensor, before the intercooler, um, basically outside air temps. I could really care less what the air temps are outside. I'm concerned with what's going into my engine. So... Anyway, um, yeah, and just real quick, I just wanted to touch on, uh, yeah, there's plenty of hose clamps here. Uh, yeah, it may not look as pretty as a uh, speed density setup. I don't really care about that. This isn't a show car. Uh, is it easy to tune? Yes. Is it make it run fast? And yes, you know, that's all I care about. And if it's running fast and running good, um, you know, that, that's what I'm concerned for or concerned about. Everyone has their preference. I'll run either one really, to be honest. Uh, if anything, I like to run a mass airflow uh, setup just to say it can be done and, and gone fast. So that's it. But anyway, uh, that's the setup. I'm going to get back to it and actually do the tuning. Don't have much gas, so, uh, and, and my car is a little bit loud, so let's hope I have enough gas to get this done and and uh, you can hear me. But uh, back in a few. All right, so here we are back in my car got everything set up hope you guys can see everything okay it might be a little bit hard to see the screen so i may have to move my camera around a little bit and um hope you can hear me hopefully we'll have enough gas um the gas is kind of down low there so anyway i'm all set up ready to go it's my log screen this is what i'm normally logging for my parameters uh, when i'm running speed density so being that we're changing that all over basically everything's still going to be the same here here everything's zeroed out um what i will be doing i've changed my global because of uh speed density i'm going to change this back because i've got 2150 cc injectors calculate that okay so i'm back at the fuel i was supposed to be at I may have to change my uh, dead time some. We'll, we'll see what happens. Well, I'll take that back. I'm going to reset this. Keep the same global I had just to make life easier. Math comp. Okay. This screen or this little, uh, little box right here, if you can see it, where it says disable math compensation with speed density operation. Only worried about that really if you're using speed density. Because basically, if you have it checked, if you make any. Any adjustments here to the math comp sliders, it, it, it also adds or subtracts to your speed density table. So um, if you leave it unchecked, well, you're not going to have any uh, 
I mean, if you have it unchecked, if you make any uh, adjustments here, it'll it'll affect your speed density table or your VE. Uh, if you have it checked, any adjustments here won't matter. Okay, start this with uh, with it all zeroed out, and uh, let me make sure there's nothing more I need to really worry about. There's just some stuff I was playing with there. it should still be good to go I won't be using the IET sensor in this one of course so it may be grayed out when I start my log everything's pretty good to go there uh, let's see okay so we're gonna start trying to start this up of course I've got to change to a three and a half inch GM master flow sensor because that's what I'm using save all to ECU if there's more than one tab over here that uh, I made adjustments to otherwise I just click over here where it says save to ECU for that one tab so anyway we're uh, gonna start start out basically zeroed out here with me just a moment start this at zero well, I guess it ain't going let's see I'm gonna right click and zero all adjustments because I want to start off fresh and new because I'm te trying to teach you guys how to do it. Okay, so live data log. It may not even start the first go around. We'll see. Here we go. Positive. See, it's going to start pulling this one up. It's 
going to pull this one down. As this one gets pulled up, this one gets pulled down. As soon as this one starts dipping in the negative, I need to start adding a little bit of dead time there. Or, I'm sorry, taking away. Taking away dead time because when we're negative, we're in the rich. See? Now, it's not really going to pull down much more than that right there. Might a little bit, but it's going to stop here. So, it's going to be right around that negative, or negative four-ish. So I need to, if I want to lean it out anymore, I need to uh, take away from some dead time. Let me see what my airflow per rev is first. And the airflow per rev is still a bit high, so instead of taking away from dead time, I'll just do it from math comp. And let's see. Do it that way. Bumping this back high again. And once again, this is going to pull this to, to where these are eventually going to be zeroed out. Might have to watch a little bit more of my other videos to really follow along with the uh, fuel trims and such. But you'll see here in a minute where all these are just about zeroed out, just about where I need them. And my airflow per rev, because I pulled the sliders down, that's what's pulling my airflow per rev down. If I pull it down, it's going to pull that. That, um, that parameter down. If I move the sliders up, it's going to move it up. I'm really only worried about that so much in the uh, idle area. I'm okay with that. I've got big cams and uh, got a two liter, but I got big cams in it. I'm not going to sweat that too much. And keeping in mind also too, this may not the airflow per rev may not pull down all at one time. You may drive around a little bit and then come back and find out it's a little bit lower, but. Still trying to keep this around zero, which it basically is. So I'm happy with that right there. Now you can see my air fuel ratio is going up and down a little bit just because of variation in the uh, O2 sensor telling the ECU that it needs to add fuel and then it adds it, then it needs to pull it away. It's trying to keep a Stoich air fuel ratio right around 14.7. Coolant temp right now is about 100 getting close to 160. I've got a cold thermostat in my car. I'm in Florida. It gets hot here and I've got a block with a half filled with concrete so I need to get it, keep it as cold as I can. But overall I'm pretty happy already. You see how quick that happened uh, to get everything in line. It, it does, doesn't take any time at all with the uh, my airflow sensor to get everything dialed in. Now that here you're saying, well, I'm running out of room. If I had to keep lowering this down, if I had to keep lowering it and lowering it, I'm going to run out of room. Well, go over here to Global Scaler. If I click Change, what I like to do is Auto Adjust, and then OK. Basically centers up my, my scale here. It didn't make any changes, because if you remember over here, this is where all my changes were. Let me just uh, highlight these real quick, and I'll show you. Now, if I move these down, these are going to be in the negative field. See how it's negative over here? And if I raise it up, it's going to be positive. Okay, well, if it was in the negative, if I did that adjustment over here at the global scalar, it basically puts these all zero and it basically compensates and takes it minus 23.4 over here. Okay, so it basically just levels everything out here. So I'm starting right in the middle. So let's say if uh, these were way down here and I had to start way up here. Or, or my sliders are going way up here and I need more room because I'm running out of room. Well, I just hit that uh, global scalar change, auto adjust, and it basically just zeroes out my whole scale. So it puts it right in the middle to give me some more room. So now then, idle's pretty much about dialed in, about where I want it. Everything's looking real good. I'm about 100, getting close to 170 degrees now. My trims are still about where I want them. I'm happy with my airflow per rev. It's not insanely high. running pretty good overall so let's say I know I'm idling right around 600 math and normally what I like to do is just um, adjust from here over to the right now I know when I go driving around some um, it's probably gonna need a little bit of fuel sometimes I see them where it goes low where it needs where it's too much fuel and I need to subtract some in this instance I'm gonna go up because uh, I'm just gonna guesstimate that it's gonna be needing some fuel here so I'm just going to be adding a few uh, 
adding a few of these at a time just to get somewhat of a smooth uh, smooth ramp and this is just to get me going and this we're just dealing idle and this is just kind of a guesstimate for the future this may not be where these are going to really need to be but i don't want to be sputtering out so i'm just going to give it a little bit extra fuel when i start to hit the hit the throttle okay now let's say if i want to zero this back out see we're kind of on the higher side of the scale so we want to zero back out just going to auto adjust again and it's not actually making any changes to our actual air fuel ratio or our, or our fuel mixtures we're just zeroing out the the scale here that's all we're doing we're just moving them it's still the same amount of uh so you remember it was 20 negative 23.4 before now it's negative 18. i've got my adjustments over here at seven so basically just zeroed out my scale that's all i did and i saved the ecu no changes see we go back over here see i'm still about where i needed to be still pretty close to zero may go ahead and just take a little bit more away just because I want the trims a little bit more on the positive side so it's not running so rich see this is dipping down a little bit low so I'm trying to bring it back out and zero it back out there Normally I do this with dead time, but being that uh, my airflow per rev is a little bit high, I'm doing it with my sliders instead because I'm still taking away fuel to get the job done. I'll take a little bit more away. That's not going to hurt any because, we're, if anything, we're trying to get get our airflow per rev down a little bit anyway, so it's really not going to hurt much. And I want a nice smooth transition. I see some people where they have a huge spike. They have one over here just like way up here. I don't I don't want that. I want a nice smooth ramp up transition there. Okay. And again I'm about zeroed out here. Close to it. But I am going to knock away from a little bit of dead time here. Now I'm using a little bit of dead time and my battery uh, injector battery adjust table. But I, for right now I'm just doing dead time. Okay, see, I've got everything about zeroed back out. Maybe a little bit on the uh, leaner side, but see my wide band line here, and uh, my wide band is the solid line and my air fuel ratio estimate, where, which is my target, is the dotted line. I'm trying to have these overlap. So I've got about everything dialed in. It's pretty quick to go ahead and get all this dialed in with the mass airflow sensor. So that's basically dialed, that's basically taking care of my idle. I know I'm maybe taking a little bit longer in this video than I really need to. Trying to show you a few different things there, but now that's it for that. I'll uh, I'll try and do a uh, cruise video here soon. Just want to show you guys the uh, the idle because a lot of people haven't don't know how to do the idle and I haven't really posted up a video. So uh, that's it for now. I'll uh, I'll uh, make another one when I get a chance and maybe show you guys a little bit about cruise. All right, have a good one.